Hey everyone, it's Chiki Su here. So I'm gonna be leaving for my China trip like tomorrow, and I'll be gone off all my social medias for two to three weeks. So I decided to do like two videos today, and then for the rest of the three weeks, you're just I'm not gonna be here. So one of them is gonna be a speed paint, and one of them is this video, which is an art supplies video. So I'm gonna be showing like most of my art supplies that I use the most and stuff. So yeah, let's get started. So first my markers, I use four types of markers. The first one is um, my Copics, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you know what they are. And these are like probably the most expensive and a lot of people use it and I know why because like the quality is really good actually. I also use some alternatives because I'm cheap. So another one is called Spectrum Noir Illustrator set. Uh, these are cheaper at Michael's with the coupon I got. It was like probably half the price of a Copic or even less. I also use um, Prismacolors. These markers are actually really really good. They, they're probably kind of on par with Copics, but um, I've heard from a lot of people that they dry out pretty quickly and I, and I can kind of tell why, but when they do work, it's actually, it's, they're really good. Um, but they don't come with um, refills, so... The fourth one, I probably, I think I only have like eight of these markers or just four, I'm not sure. These are like, this is a brand called color zendo which i found at the back of the store in walmart it said alcohol marker so i decided to try it out it's a bullet nib and chisel nib which i don't really prefer because i like my brush nibs but the chisel nib wait the bullet nib wears down over a while so it acts like a brush nib if that makes sense so they're kind of good oh and also these two this is like a bullet nib and a brush nib and for this one bullet wait bullet brush so yeah those are the markers i use so next my pencil crayons uh i don't i like using them and yet i don't just because pencil crayons if you draw with them it takes a long time to get results that you want so the first um, pencil crayon I use brand I have a lot of brands just keep that in mind um, is the Prismacolor premier pencil crayon these pencil crayons are really good a lot of people really enjoy using them I really like them but they're they're really soft so whenever I color it kind of goes over the line art and I don't really like that it kind of makes the line art fade out in certain places and doesn't in other places which I don't really like but all in all it has really vibrant colors and it's super easy to blend um, I use these ones the most like I have them in like a case over here sorted by like color families like these are the grays and blues and greens and purples and reds and warms and stuff I also use uh, Faber-Castell the What's it called? The Polychromos one? Wait, is it? Oh yeah, Polychromos here. Zoom in. Okay. And these pencil crayons are also very good. I'm pretty sure the Prisma colors are the wax one. And these are the oil pencil crayons. Um, a lot of artists like to use these as well. And I kind of lean more towards this pencil crayon just because like I feel like I get a lot more smoother color with it but I don't have a lot of these pencil crayons so I always reach for my Prisma colors I don't use this one a lot I rarely use this I think I bought this once and I like never touched it again they're like there went color soft I can't say a lot about this pencil crayon just because I barely use it but I think it's similar to Prisma color but don't like judge me on it I also have Crayola. Um, yeah, Crayola. I usually give these to my for my brother to use, but sometimes, like, if I don't have a certain color, I'll just grab like a Crayola pencil crayon, and it does the job easily. So. I have one more. I don't. I don't touch this one either. Like, I have a lot of pencil crayon brands for some reason. Um, this is the Montmartre. Uh. 
pencil crayon. I've never heard of this brand. My mom got it for me for a birthday present and I rarely use it. I think I use it in school for like school projects and stuff. So that's all my pencil crayons. So next are my watercolors. I also like using these because just because um, my watercolors last longer. So what I use right now is called uh, Koi Watercolors Pocket Field Sketchbook. It's the set of 12 colors and I'm pretty and like I'm sure that if you're like wanting this color, this paint palette, then um, all you need is like the 12 colors because that's enough. So right now it's like really dirty just because I think I just finished using it and I get lazy to color it. So these are the colors. I think I have the color chart somewhere. But they get really vibrant color, more vibrant than um, most watercolors should. Um, which I kind of like about watercolors because I like my colors to be um, vibrant. I have the color chart here. So there's Chinese white, lemon yellow, whatever hue, permanent yellow, and so on. Just pause the video, whatever. Wait. Oh, some of these aren't in my palette, I don't think. Oh wait, never mind, I'm going crazy. So this is these are my colors. And I'm also being crazy because this is a set of 24 colors. I just wasn't counting. Okay, this is a set of 24 colors. 24 is all you need. Um so yeah, these colors are really nice. And I suggest if you're like a beginner, you can start with this. And even if you like have a little bit of of experience then you should also go with these watercolors because they're really nice watercolors um if you're also a beginner i recommend using these because these are like more cheaper this one i'm pretty sure is like 30 something dollars on amazon canadian but this is the artist's loft one that i found at michael's it was like six dollars and I started off with this paint set. It has, it also has very vibrant colors. The colors are very pigmented, but um, I don't know. Like it doesn't give smooth coloring. I guess I don't know how to explain it, but um, Koi is a lot. It is a big step from this watercolor palette. But if you're a beginner, this is a good watercolor set to start with. Um, for my paint brushes, I use, it's the Winder, Windsor and Newton Cotman, I'll zoom in, Windsor and Newton Cotman Round, this is like my bigger brush I use, I have a smaller brush that's a 4 here, this is like 6, okay, I use these a lot, They're, they hold a lot of water which I like because I don't like dipping my water like every two seconds so these um brushes are really good but they're like pricey because without the coupon it was like 14 dollars per brush so yeah and it was in the beginner section too but they're good brushes i also love using this um i forgot what they're called they're like brushes with a water barrel um water brushes i don't, I don't know so basically you like put water, you can like screw off this barrel and then you just put water in here then you, then there's, if you squeeze it a bit, water comes out if you squeeze it enough see there's water and, oh god I got wet oopsies I like using these because this way I don't have to use like um, a cup of water, I always have to like refill it and everything and there's always fresh new clean water in this barrel and if you think this is like a little, like too little, it's actually the right amount because I could finish like one piece and I'd still have like this much left. I don't know if you can see that. But I like using these a lot too. I think I use these more than my Windsor and Newton ones. So I think that's all for my watercoloring supplies. For pencils, I use Uni Kuro Toga in 05. You could use any lead pencil honestly, but the me mechanism inside keeps the pencil at a sharp point so I don't have to like rub I don't have to like turn my pencil a bit to get a sharp point when I sketch I also have the these they're like colored pencils but they erase a lot better they erase more like pencils I use these for like rough sketches really rough sketches like the base of the drawing and then afterwards I kind of just 
sketch over it with my graphite pencil like for this one um see how there's like a blue outline everywhere that's basically this pencil doing its magic for erasers i like to use the faber castell dust free eraser um this one it's not completely dust free but it's a lot less dust free than most erasers just because when you erase it erase it rubs off on one strand so it keeps your eraser shavings to a minimum I've used this one for like a year and it's like this big so for my outliners I use Faber Castell in black and sepia I use Copic multi liners in black and sepia and I also have a couple of microns but I tend to use my Copic multi liners the most just because they're more waterproof and for highlights and everything I used to use my Sakura jelly roll which I hear a lot of people use but I prefer my uni ball signal broad white pen thing because the ink flows out a lot more easier so it, I don't have to like wait for the ink to come out or like scribble it a bunch of times because it's usually already there I think that's it for my drawing tools I guess I have a lot of paper that's because whenever I see paper on sale at Michael's I go crazy so the first one I have this one is the one I like the most and also the one I have the most of just because there's like a 50% off sale once and I just bought five stacks that I have to finish so I have two sizes there's one of these and one of that if I want like a small drawing I'll just use this and for this one I rarely use the full size I usually just I'll usually just cut this in half this is like really thick paper which is um, ideal for watercolor and marker to like blend a lot on so I really like using this paper. For marker, I also like using this Canson Fanboy Illustration paper. It's not the best for watercolor just because it can't take um, water very well because it warps a lot. But it's really good for marker. I just don't use it a lot for marker anymore just because I have to get rid of this first. For actual watercolor, I use Canson Watercolor Cold Press. A lot of people don't know the difference between cold press and hot press. Cold press is basically um, bumpier paper. It has more of a toothy feeling. So it absorbs the colors faster, which doesn't allow for much blending. Whereas for the hot press, it's smoother and you can blend a lot, but it will take a while for the, for the colors to soak in. It's not pricey and good quality, so that's why I like this paper. I might get arches just because a lot of people say it's a lot better quality, but that stuff is really expensive. I also use Tone Tan. I don't use it a lot anymore just because I don't use my pencil crayons a lot. And um, I can't work well with this paper. It uh, shows my pencil crayons very well. It makes them more vibrant and it like almost pops out of the paper. Like it's more brownish and I haven't drawn in it for a long time so these drawings are like poop. So yeah, pencil crayons take a while to draw with and I am the most impatient person. You may have seen a lot of artists use this sketchbook. It's the Kenson Mixed Media Sketchbook. And it's really good because one, it's not crazy expensive. It's probably like, um, it was $17 at Michael's original price but on sale it was like ten dollars or something and for this quality sketchbook it's a really good deal some drawings the paper is not as thick it's like 90 pounds so it's good for like light coloring and simple Copic artworks so it's better for sketches and stuff um, I think that's it for my paper so that's all my art supplies for this video. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in the description. 
and I'll see you after my trip. Bye-bye.